Welcome to Toy Polloi. Hello and welcome to another video from Toy Polloi. Today we're going to look at the Micronauts Microtron and fix and restore the two that I have in my collection. I have one here on the right which is a lovely complete version of a Microtron but it's missing its stickers so that's uh, one job to do. And here we have another on the left which is uh, a less complete one. It's missing a few bits. It's missing the tracks off of uh, the little wheels here and it also has um, some dodgy uh, electronics inside and so the motor and gears no longer work. So in this video we're going to look at restoring a few of these sort of common defects on a vintage Micronauts Microtron. The Microtron is actually a pretty cool toy because it's supposed to do quite a lot of things but uh, as with a lot of toys of this era they tend to break over time. Uh, the main feature of this toy is that it's uh, battery operated. If I turn it around you can see there's a battery compartment on the back and uh, when you flip the switch uh, it should have tracks on these wheels which will uh, roll the vehicle around. Uh, this uh, little uh, screw on the front should spin uh, and you can also make the arms rotate if you put them in a, in a certain way. Uh, but on this one we're missing the tracks and if I switch the uh, toy on you can hear the motor is working but nothing is turning none of the gears turn so it looks like something has come loose inside and I can also see on this side that there's a small gear here which is um, got a crack in it so it actually rotates on the axle uh, so that needs to be fixed as well so I think the first thing we're going to have to do is to take this toy apart and try and work out what's going on and why it's not working uh, and then we'll see if we can make some replacement tracks to go on uh, these little uh, wheels here and also make some uh, replacement stickers for the other Microtron that I have first thing we need to do is to get inside the Microtron. Now it looks like there's only a couple of screws that hold the body together. There's two here on the front chest section and if we open up the uh, battery compartment there's another one just inside there. So uh, I'm just going to unscrew these and uh, have a look inside. This is the first time I've ever done this so uh, it'll all be new to me as well. I'm hoping it will be fairly easy to work out what's gone wrong and see which gears and bits have uh, stopped moving. So there's the three screws removed. Now I'm hoping we can just prise this apart. Now I want to do this quite slowly so that none of the gears and bits fall out too much. So there we have it. Okay, so now I've taken this apart and have a good look at it, I can work out what's going on. And it is the most ridiculously overcomplicated set of gearing I've ever seen in a toy. You've basically got a motor here which turns this little cog here. This then rotates this shaft, but there's a loose gear on this shaft which the small gear at the end rotates this gear here which then comes back and rotates this loose gear which then rotates this gear uh, which then rotates this axle which is attached to the wheels but that gear is also uh, rubbing on this gear here which rotates this shaft here which comes up to the top to rotate the arm axle and then you've got a final uh, piece which is this little piece here which rests on the top of this gear here and this is the bit that then rotates to move the little drill section on the front of the Microtron. It is incredibly complicated and I can see why uh, this is prone to breaking. It's just a very complicated set of gears to do something relatively simple. And uh, looking at this I can see there's initially one uh, clear problem which I'm going to fix and hopefully that will fix everything. It's uh, This gear here has actually uh, broken, it snaps off the shaft so I can rotate this gear separately and there's a crack. So it's actually loose uh, and moves on the shaft. I can probably show you this, you can see it moves about um, and is loose so I'm going to have to glue that back on and we'll see if that actually fixes the whole mechanism. So I think it should be all right to just remove this whole axle with all of the uh, gears on it. I can just pull that out and as long as I remember where everything goes back it shouldn't be a problem. So there's the gear. It's got a bit of hair and stuff on it so we can just pull that off and then you can see that this end gear is completely loose. In fact I can remove it. I don't know if you can see that there, there is a crack uh, right through this gear where it's, it's just split. So I think what we're going to have to do is um, I'm going to try and put a bit of uh, super glue in that just to glue that back together and then I'm going to have to glue this 
back onto the shaft here so that it shouldn't move around um, and hopefully that will fix everything. So what I'm going to do, I've got a bit of super glue because I think this is the easiest way to do this and I'm going to just drop that into the hole like so and hopefully I should be able to just ease that into the, the crack area, that's not too bad, I can see it's scorching through the crack there. Now I'm going to slot this back onto the axle and hopefully I just let that glue and go off. That should stick and should stick pretty firmly and we can try uh, the Microtron again see if it works. If that doesn't uh, fix everything then there's obviously another issue that I've not yet found. While waiting for the glue to dry I thought I'd give the uh, whole thing a bit of a clean out. So I'm just using some cotton buds here to wipe out any dirt and I think I've found another reason why this uh, Microtron doesn't work and that is also that the gear on the motor is loose. If you see here I can actually uh, move the gear off with my finger it's just not being held onto the shaft at all so I can rotate this around I've actually put some batteries in so you can see if I switch this on the motor works but I can stop the gear with my hand uh, and the motor carries on spinning so uh, that will also need to be uh, glued on but this uh, the shaft of this motor doesn't appear to have any sort of uh, sort of little rough bits. The shaft on that the uh, axle had some rough sections so this one doesn't so I think I'm just going to scratch this with uh, a file uh, and then I can add some glue and uh, we'll glue this back on. Hopefully then everything really should work again. So I just have a small metal file here and I'm going to try and uh, rough up the surface on the, this the uh, motor sort of shaft here just so that there's a bit of something for uh, the glue to stick to. So I've managed to roughen up that surface there a little bit more. Uh, I think if it was just a sort of purely smooth shaft there the uh, glue wouldn't hold particularly well. So we can now try and glue this little gear back on. Again I'm going to use the same uh, techniques I did with the other one. I'm just going to gently drop a little bit of super glue into the end. You can see that like so. And then I'll push this onto the shaft and we'll let that set. I've got to do this quite quickly like so and we can let that set and hopefully that should uh, no longer uh, move freely. So the glue has now had time to go off on this uh, gear that I've stuck to the motor. If we test this again I'll switch this on I should be able to hold the gear and it stops the motor now rather than running freely so I think that has worked. So we can now put everything back together it's fairly straightforward you've got a long axle for the top which is where the arms hold on You've got a smaller axle that goes down the side. This is uh, the sort of bit that drives that one. Then you've got the one that I fixed at the bottom. So this is the one I've glued on the uh, side gear there. That has to slot in place. Uh, make sure everything's where it should be like that. And then we have the final small drive gear which comes off the motor. And that just slots in like so. So I think that's everything in place. We can now need to uh, put the front section on with the last little gear which is the one that runs the drill bit on the front and we're going to have to put this in place hold it over the top and uh, we'll screw this back together before testing the motor otherwise I think all of these will ping out uh, if it's not screwed on so let's screw this back together and we'll give it a try. So now we can test it to see if it works I will test this but I'm not going to speak while it's uh, being tested because the motors are so noisy but as you can see here I put the arms and the uh, little uh, groin drill bit on just so that we can see that if that everything's moving so let's switch this on So yeah, that does work about as well as it ever did. It's just as noisy as it was originally uh, and all of the gears are working. So uh, as you can see, what you need to do to fix that is to, uh, it's on this one, two of the uh, little gears had cracked and were loose on the axle. So that seems to be the most common issue on this. So unless the motor's broken, uh, that will be the next issue. 
For the tracks of the Microtron, the original tracks, as you can see, are made out of a, quite a thin bit of rubber. Uh, this is pretty thin all over and just sort of gently sort of holds on to the wheels. It's quite easily broken and obviously very easily lost, as more often than not when you uh, pick up a Microtron, it will be missing these tracks. So I wanted to try and make something uh, that was close to this. Um, and I've had a look around and really it's sort of pretty hard to find anything that actually looks or feels sort of similar but there was one thing that I found which was a pretty close match and I think we can uh, use it to make something uh, possibly not going to work but it will look quite nice for uh, displaying this vehicle and this is it it's uh, another piece of Lego if you watch my channel I use uh, quite a lot of bits of Lego to fix toys now this is a bit of technical Lego it's some some uh, sort of tire tracks uh, for a tank now uh, these are fairly straightforward to get. I picked this up off eBay. There are a few people selling them uh, and they do appear to come in uh, multiple sizes. None of the sizes are a perfect match for this, but I don't think that's going to be a problem because uh, what we're going to do is we're going to cut this down and make a new bit of track that fits over the wheels. If you see here, you can see it's uh, there's quite a lot of excess. So I think we're going to have to modify this, cut it and glue it. Uh, and then hopefully we'll get a bit of track that sits on this. Uh, and it may or may not work. I guess it probably won't work because it's a little bit thicker, as you can see here. But it should still look quite nice and be pretty good uh, when we put this vehicle back on display. So the first thing we're going to have to do is to cut this track. Uh, and I want to cut, uh, I'm going to cut sort of right next to one of these uh, little uh, I don't know what you call them, but they're sort of the tread pieces um, so that we've got to cut right close to the edge of that. And I'm just going to use some plastic cutters that I have here to gently cut through the plastic. It's fairly easy to do like so. Right, now that we've got that open, you can see on the inside there are little uh, tabs that these hook into the bits of Lego. Uh, these aren't going to be of any use to us because they just make it too, uh, sort of, it just sticks out too far if we uh, leave those on. So I think uh, we're going to also have to cut those off. And again, I'm just going to use the plastic cutters to gently nip uh, all of those away. So we're just left with a blank piece of track. Now that I've cut off all of those tabs, we can hold it up against the uh, wheels on the vehicle and we'll see how much excess we've got left. Oh, quite a bit, so that's not so bad. So uh, looking at this, I think I'm going to uh, need to work out a way that we can glue this. And I have an idea uh, to uh, make enough area on these little uh, sort of uh, track pieces that we can uh, get a good glue fix and uh, it should hold in place quite nicely. Now I've counted uh, how many little tabs we need and it looks like we're going to need 20 uh, and then I'm going to modify the last two of those 20 uh, to join this together. So uh, I'm going to cut this down and we'll just be left with 20 uh, little uh, track pieces. So this is the 20th track piece there so I'm just going to trim this off again close to the furthest side of that track like so and we're left with two ends that as you can see are right close so what we're going to do now is modify uh, these two ends so that there's quite a lot of area that we can then glue them together now my plan is with this to make a sort of little interlocking section so that there's quite a lot of surface area for the glue to stick to so i'm just going to cut into uh, this track but about halfway like so and then I'm going to trim off uh, the right hand side again like so. So you can see we've now got a sort of little, uh, I don't know what sort of shape you call that, maybe a little sort of L wash C shape. And I'm also going to cut off part of this edge here just to make it a little bit shorter. Like so. And then we've got to do the same to the other end. And this is uh, obviously got to match so it's got to be exactly the same way around actually so it's just got to do the same thing again onto this piece so if I just cut in about halfway and then trim that down put that bit of rubber away and I'm just going to cut this end again slightly short now hopefully if I cut those exactly right they should match up which they almost do. I think I've just got to do a little bit more trimming. And then they, there's a lot of surface area there that we can glue together. So I'm just going to trim that a little bit more just to make it match. So I've now trimmed those down. They seem to match pretty well. I'm just going to use a little bit of super glue to join these two ends together. I think there should be enough surface area that this should glue pretty nicely and form quite a good sort of fix. And hopefully everything should hold in place.
So that seems to have glued pretty firmly. It's uh, held in place pretty nicely. I think uh, giving a little bit of extra surface area certainly made that quite a strong bond. And I've now made a second one as well, uh, exactly the same size. So let's try these on uh, Microtron and see how well they fit. And it looks like they fit pretty nicely. Yeah, I'm pretty pleased with that. Let's put the other one on and see how that goes. Yeah, that's a pretty reasonable fit. I'm pretty happy with that. I don't think these ever will roll because they're a little bit too wide and actually sit on the uh, frame of the wheels. But as a display piece, uh, I think that's going to look a lot better than it sitting there without any treads on. Let's bring in an original one, as you can see here. So, as you can see, yeah, they are quite a lot wider and a little bit chunkier, but I actually quite like the, uh, the look of those. So, yeah, I'm pretty happy with how those have gone and uh, uh, let's get on with the rest of the fix. Now that I've got the microtron on the left back and working, the last thing I need to do on my uh, right hand microtron here is uh, make some replacement stickers. Now I've had a quick look online and I found someone who'd made some uh, replacement stickers, but I didn't think the quality of them looked like the, uh, the fine detail in the actual images wasn't as accurate as uh, I like to do on my vehicle. So I found a scan of the original sticker sheet, which again wasn't that amazing. And from that and from the stickers that I have left on uh, this one here, I was able to recreate all the stickers and here they are. So uh, this is as close as I can get to the original sticker sheet. All of the, the markings and little uh, details are as, as accurate as I can possibly make them. And I printed this onto a sticky backed glossy paper uh, so I, all I've got to do now is to cut them out and apply them to Microtron. I will make this file available on my website, toypoloi.com, so you can go and download that if you want to add those to your own Microtron. So let's go ahead, cut these out, and we'll apply them to him. Now, there's no set way of applying stickers to uh, Micronauts toys. There was never a guide of what you do and the right place to put them. So we just sort of have to make it up as we go along and stick them where we think it looks best. And there we have it. I've now stuck all of the stickers back onto this right hand Microtron. And as you can see, he's looking pretty nice. He's got the relevant sort of flashes on the front and stickers on the wheels and a few on the sides here, a couple on his ears. Uh, I've not gone sort of overblown with all of the stickers because uh, uh, sometimes you can put too many stickers on. I think that was the original intention with these Micronauts ones, that they just gave you a lot of stickers so you could add as many or as little as you wanted. So I've added a fair few, but I've also left a few off because I think it just looks a bit overblown. So there we have it. That is my uh, Microtron restoration. The guy on the right, you can see we fixed the uh, gears and everything so that he runs nicely. And I've made some custom uh, Caterpillar tracks there that don't run, but they do look quite nice. I actually think I prefer the sort of chunky look of these tracks to the sort of weedy look of the original ones. I'm going to keep looking to see if I can find some uh, better tracks that I can modify to make these so that they do actually run in the end. And I've still got to find a couple more parts for this one. He's missing if we turn them around. You can see that there's a couple of extra parts that this one has a little wheel and a sort of T section thing. This guy I have not got them for yet, so I, that's something else I've got to hunt for and uh, just find a couple of replacements of those. I'm sure I'll find them on eBay at some point. So as I said, the sticker sheet will be available on toypoloi.com. So go there and check out uh, this sticker sheet. There are plenty of other sticker sheets for various uh, Micronauts and other toy lines, Star Wars and all sorts on there. So I hope that's been of interest to you and thanks for watching. Thanks for watching Toy Poloi. Subscribe for more great videos. You can also follow Toy Poloi on Twitter and Facebook.